So everybody wants to protect their house and their investment as best as they can. That's why we're all buying a bunch of different kinds of video cameras to put up around our houses. But what a lot of people don't realize is how vulnerable your garage is and how easy it is to actually get inside of it. And unfortunately, most people use their garage as a way of blocking people from being able to get into their house because typically they do not lock the door that goes from their house and into their garage. So today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the most common ways that thieves can gain access to your garage. And I'm also gonna show you how you can do a better job of protecting yourself, your family, and your house from possibly being robbed in the future. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so this is where they'll use one or two different kinds of tools. They'll form some sort of a hook they could use a metal clothes hanger. In this case, this is some scrap ground wire that I had laying around. Anything that they can make a hook that's somewhat flexible that they can get in there and kind of move around to then reach that cord, that's what they're gonna use. And then sometimes they might even use a block of wood to shove up in between the weather stripping going around the garage and the garage door itself, just to be able to give them some more room in order to use their hook they have more room to move it around and they also have a little bit better feel as to when they have that tension once they actually grab the wire. So since I'm not very good at this, I'm gonna need all the help that I can get. I am gonna take a block and I'm gonna put it between the garage door and the weather stripping to give me more room to be able to maneuver the wire. And then I'm gonna start feeding my hook in there far enough to where I can grab that release. Then once they feel like they've got enough of the wiring into the garage, then they will start fishing around for that release. And they may go back and forth, they may twist it around, but once they start to feel a little bit of tension or they can feel like there's something on the hook, that's when they will wrap it around and start to try and pull it out of the garage door. And then once they're able to pull that release cord out of the garage, I just give it a pull, and now they have open access to, in this case, a messy garage and maybe the rest of your house. All right, so now that I've shown you how they can gain access to the garage and possibly even the house as well, now I'm going to show you some steps that we can take in order to do a better job of safeguarding ourselves from this being able to happen. Now aside from them being able to gain access by fishing for this release cord, one of the easiest ways that they gain access to the garage is a lot of people do not lock their car doors and inside of pretty much everybody's vehicle is a remote for their garage just because it's very convenient to use. We use them all the time when we're coming and going from our homes. But a lot of times people leave them in their vehicles and they leave their vehicles unlocked. So they just open the doors, pull out the remotes, and they can just open up the garage door a lot easier than if they had to fish for this cord. So a solution to this is instead of using the regular garage remotes that come with your opener, you can buy keychain ones that then also come into the house with you at the end of the night so that there's not one left in your vehicle. Aside from that, you can also install a smart garage door opener. These can be very convenient where you're able to operate your garage door using your phone. They're encrypted, so they're not really able to be hacked in order for somebody else to be able to gain access to the garage. But now let's talk about the cord itself and some things that we can do in order to make it so that they cannot fish this through the door. Now, the easiest thing to do would this tab right here is when they grab a hold of the cord, it's ultimately going to grab a hold of this tab a lot of the times, and that's what's gonna make it really easy to pull it then through the garage door. So a lot of times it's gonna be just as easy as undoing a knot that's holding the tag on, and then you can just pull the tag right off. And now when they go to fish for it, this cord will be here, but there won't really be anything to snag onto in order to pull the cord all the way through the garage door. But even with this tab removed, is it still possible in order for them to fish this rope through the garage door? Yes, it is. It's a whole lot harder. But if you want to take it a step further, what we'd want to do is we'd want to cut with some scissors. We'd want to cut this rope down to a length that's still accessible for us if we need to pull the release in order to open the garage door manually. Cut it to a length that would not be long enough in order to be able to reach the outside of the garage. If it can't reach the outside of the garage, then they can't pull on it and therefore they can't release it to open the garage. But maybe you wanna take it a step further than that and you just wanna remove this all together. You could just cut it all the way up at the top or a lot of times it's just as easy as how we remove the tab. There's usually a knot. Just undo the knot and then pull the cord out. Now the downside to this though is in the event of say a power outage and you actually wanna open the garage door manually because it won't open without the electricity, it's gonna make it a whole lot harder for you to be able to release that release and be able to open it manually. Hey, really quickly before I get into that next important step to better protect yourself, 
If you are finding value in this or you're finding it to be interesting, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below or leave me a comment down in the comment section about how you feel about the video so far. It really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to bring awareness to them and be able to help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. Now, another method that I found to be very, very useful in that we don't have to lose the release at all, we don't have to do any cutting, we don't have to just remove anything, is I like to use a pool noodle. Now, this is just a standard pool noodle that you can get just about anywhere, and I just measure out how long my cord is from the base of the release all the way down to that tab. Once I've got that measurement, then I just cut the pool noodle down to that length, and then I will run the cord up through the pool noodle and reconnect it to the release. So now with this, which is probably my favorite way of doing it just because it allows you to still have access to the cord yourself, it's almost gonna be virtually impossible for somebody to try and fish this out to be able to gain access to the garage. Not only is this large around, it's gonna be a lot larger around than they're anticipating, so they're not gonna fashion a hook that's gonna wrap around this to begin with, but even if they did and they were able to grab onto the pool noodle and pull it towards the garage door, it's not gonna be able to fit through the garage door and they're never gonna be able to gain access to the tab itself in order to be able to pull on it to then be able to gain access to the garage. So again, for these reasons, this is probably my favorite method just for your everyday use. Now, oftentimes garage doors will also have these locks on them that then lock into the rail itself. So these are a nice safety feature, especially if you're gonna be away from the house for a while. And a lot of garage doors already have these on them or they may be in the center where you twist them. If you don't already have one of these, you can easily go pick one up at your local home improvement store. And they're pretty much as easy as installing with using some bolts on the top and the bottom to lock them into place. And pretty much all of your rails are already gonna have these notches knocked out of them in order for that latch to go into the lock into place. Now this isn't really feasible for everyday use because eventually you're probably gonna forget that this is locked. Try to open the garage using your garage door opener. And if you do that while this is locked, you could very well do damage to the opener itself, possibly breaking it and having to replace it. Now another safety precaution you can take if you're gonna be gone for a while is just unplugging the garage door opener itself. That way, if somebody was to somehow gain access to one of your remotes, or maybe you know of somebody that has a remote, if you unplug that, there's no way that they can use the remote in order to open the garage door. But this would not stop somebody from being able to get in if, for instance, they were able to fish the cord through the garage like I showed in the beginning. But it's just another safety measure that you can take in order to just be a little bit safer while you're away from your house for a long period of time. Also, some other locks that people might have, it's pretty common now on your master opener on the inside of your garage where you'll have a button obviously to open the door, a light button, and then you have this over here. This is a lock button. If you flip this down, now it's in the lock position and now the garage door cannot be opened from the outside using a remote. From my previous experience as a law enforcement officer, the biggest tip that I can probably give a homeowner to do a better job of safeguarding themselves, and while all these other tips and methods are really important and there are things that we should all be doing to do a better job of safeguarding ourselves, the biggest tip that I can give homeowners is to not let people know what you have. And I know that that sounds really simple, but a lot of people don't think about making sure that they're not just advertising what they have. And this isn't always going to be uh, avoidable. If you have a front facing garage in say a neighborhood and somebody's scouting the neighborhood and you're working out in your garage, obviously you can't hide everything, but I wouldn't just leave everything out in plain view and certainly don't leave things just sitting outside of your house that don't need to be. If you remove the temptation and people don't realize what you have, then they're gonna be a whole lot less interested in trying to break into your house in the first place. But with that being said, there are some very easy steps that can be taken in order to keep people from being able to see what you have, like put things away, organize things. On top of that, if you have a garage door with windows in it, I know it's really nice for letting light in, but it's also really nice for people to be able to see into your garage and see what you have. Or if they're trying to fish for that release, it makes it a whole lot easier because they can see that hook and they can connect it to the release a whole lot faster. Now, even though now you've seen how vulnerable a garage can be for break-ins, at least now you have some steps that you can take depending on your situation, what you'd like to do. You have some steps that you can take to better defend yourself. 
Now, if you like DIY videos like this, I'll post some links right over here that you might be interested in that will take you right to either a video or a playlist that might be of interest to you. So I hope this video was interesting and helpful for you. And if it was, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions at all, you can leave those down in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.